G'day aspiring engineers. In this revised tutorial, number five of the 16 basic tutorials in Fusion 360, we're gonna learn what we've already learned up until part five, and we're gonna do some new stuff as well, specifically the S key. Now we're gonna do a little bit with the right click menu, but that's in a couple more videos. This S key is much more basic and it's a really good idea, and it's a more fundamental part of the user interface. Welcome to Future Engineering. The future starts now. All right, let's begin by naming our part. We'll save it as part five, and we'll put it in 16 parts. Save that. Let's turn on the origin so we can see what's going on. And let's make sure that we're capturing the design history. Uh, what you do there is you right click on the head of the browser, and down there at the bottom of the flyout menu, it says Capture Design History. That puts the timeline down below and records everything that goes on. Uh, with our origin visible, we can now see the three reference planes in space and the point of origin. Let's do it both ways. Let's start uh, the ordinary way, and that is create a sketch, and then mouse over the point of origin until you see the blue and red plane pre-highlighted with the grid corresponding. Click on that plane. It'll turn to face you if you've got your preferences set to the way that I recommend in the free PDF download. Go ahead and download that if you haven't already. I'll start the line tool and I'm just going to roughly sketch this out. Click and drag to make the curve. I showed you that in the last video. Uh, we'll just put this over here somewhere and then uh, vertical line down over here and then I'm going to do this vertical line. I'm going to do it on purpose. Here we go. What I'll do now is uh, click on the, the vertical and horizontal constraint in the constraints toolbar. Mouse over that skewed line there and you notice that the, the constraint is attached to my cursor. When I click on the line it will snap to vertical and you see the little geometric constraint icon right next to that line. The next thing I want to do is uh, click on the coincident constraint and get the point of origin of the curve at the top to be the same as the point of origin of the document. So with that coincident constraint active so that it's visible on the cursor, I'll click first on the point of origin of the circle and then on the point of origin of the document and you see that they jump together. The next thing I want to do is begin to make this the correct size and so I'll hit the D key and that gives me the dimension tool attached to my cursor. I'm going to click on the base of the sketch down here and place that down here at the bottom. You notice from the drawing that this is supposed to be 240 millimeters. So with the blue focus field, type in 240. Watch what happens when I hit enter. The whole sketch has resized. And this is a pretty neat feature that we have in Fusion 360. And it comes from a preference. Let's go to preferences quickly. On the design page of preferences under general, we see down here, it says, scale the entire sketch at the first dimension. I've got that ticked on, and that's why it worked nicely a minute ago. I'll turn that off, apply, and OK. Then I'm going to go Control Z a couple of times to go back to where we were. I'll double click on this dimension so that it turns blue, and type in the 240. Now that I've turned off that preference, when I press Enter, the whole sketch does not rescale. So what I'm going to do is Control Z to return that to normal. Let's go and turn that preference back on, and I'll show you that one more time. On the design page of General, scale the entire sketch at first dimension. Click Apply and OK, and then let's do the right size here, 240 millimeters. And when I press Enter, the entire sketch updates and rescales. That's very handy. Now, we've got the Select tool active, and you'll notice that some of these entities are not quite nailed down yet. They're not fixed. I want this one to be in the same line as the other shoulder. So here's the collinear constraint in the constraints toolbar. When I click it to turn it on, you can see that the collinear constraint is attached to my cursor. This one's already selected. It's a darker blue. And I mouse over this other one and click it. And now uh, when I use the select tool, you'll see that I can move both of them once because they have this collinear constraint, one on each of them. You know that you can actually select these constraints. I'll select this one uh, by clicking on it, left click, 
and uh, you notice that it's now a little bit brighter than all of the rest of them. If I hit the delete key, they disappear and I've got the select tool active now and I can now drag one of them by themselves. Let's put that back on there, collinear between this one and the other. Now they're in the same line. Let's go to the select tool and when I drag, they both move together because they are constrained together. All right, now for the S key, just click the S on your keyboard and sketch shortcuts appears right where your cursor is. Just click outside to make it go away. Try that again. Hit the S key. There it is. Now click outside to make it disappear. Then hit the S key one more time to bring it up. At the moment, I've got uh, the select tool on there and that's the only one. And that's really handy. There's the select tool up there. But rather than mouse up into the ribbon bar above, I'm just going to hit the S key and there it is right at the cursor. So let's put a few other useful pieces in there. I'm going to type in L for line, and there it is. And if I mouse along the line, there's this little arrow that's hooking upwards. If I click on the little arrow, it puts the line tool in sketch shortcuts. Now I find that it's really good to have things in here, but you don't want to have too many. I like to have the line tool. I'm also going to put in C for circle. And there's the center diameter circle. I'm also going to put in two point, I have to scroll down to find it. There it is, two point rectangle. And there's a the little up arrow, puts it in there. The other thing I'm going to put in there is mirror. That's M for mirror. And there's the mirror feature and then there's the mirror sketch. I'm going to put the mirror sketch in there. That will do for me for now. If you ever want to take anything out of there, you search for it, M for mirror. And here it is. And rather than the up arrow, you see the X and the X will delete it out of the sketch shortcuts menu. So when you hit the S key, the mirror is no longer there. But let's put that back in there. Mirror, sketch mirror, click on the little hook arrow. And then when I click on S now, it's there. So these are just a few tools that I like to have in my sketch shortcuts. And so anytime you've got the cursor anywhere on the page, hit the S key and there you've got your favorite tools. Uh, very handy. Okay. So one more I'll put in there is uh, D for dimension, sketch dimension. And that's the one that I want to use right now. So I'm going to get back to the select cursor. And just to show you that it's there, click the S key for shortcuts. There's the dimension tool. Looking at our drawing, we can see that there's a, a dimension that we need between the point of origin of the document and the base of the part. Put that over here and we'll change that to 170. Then from the shoulder to the base, that needs to be 140. Press enter. These shoulders need to be of the same length. And rather than put a dimension on there, which I could, you know, it's always good to use a geometric constraint as opposed to a dimensional constraint if you possibly can. And so what I'll use is the equal constraint. Click on one shoulder and then the other, and now they're equal. You can see that we need a tangent relationship between the curve and this vertical line. So there's the tangent constraint. Click once on the curve and then once on the vertical line. And we've got a smooth transition from the curve to the line now. The next thing we need to do is put a dimensional constraint on this semicircle. And you see that when I'm about to place this dimension, it's got an R in front of it. And so the radius here is according to the drawing 80, press enter. And now the sketch is black all the way around which is good. Finish the sketch. So that's the way that we do this thing where we're drawing the whole outline. Let me show you the other way now, and that is using the mirror sketch tool. This is really good for when you're, if you get a job and they're looking over your shoulder to see whether you can do this quickly or not, it's good to be able to practice all the things that make for an efficient worker. That'll help you. So uh, let's get on with this. We'll start the sketch on the usual plane. And I'm going to start with the line tool. And this time I'm going to just uh, start drawing roughly here. Click and drag. Go past it. And finish it off. Now you notice this vertical one here is not quite vertical. So the way we fix that is to get the horizontal vertical constraint. Click on that line. You see it snapped to vertical and you get the little icon there which indicates that it is constrained to vertical. Next thing I want to do is use the coincident tool. Hit the escape key to get back to the select cursor. Click on the coincident tool. Click once on the point of origin for the curve and then on the point of origin for the document itself and they jump together. Next thing I want to do is get the vertical line on the plane. 
that at the point of origin is going to end up right in the middle of our part. Then I want the Select tool again, so I click on the Select button in the ribbon bar at the top, select that vertical line, and change its line type to Construction. You notice there are two options there. We'll go for the Construction line type. To get to the Mirror Sketch tool, it's on the Create drop-down. There it is. Click on it, opens the dialog box, and we'll select the curves that we want to mirror. There's one curve and these lines. Then we'll advance to the next thing in the dialog box that's got the objects, then the mirror line. Click on that field so that it's ready for input. Choose the construction line and you see that it ghosts across and the mirror is done. So that looks exactly what we want, so we'll click OK. And there we have the rough sketch. I'm just going to hit the E key. So even though I've got the cursor active with the dimension tool and we really should finish sketch, I can just hit the E key and that takes us out of the sketch and into the extrude dialog box. It's asking for profile and one is already selected. It's the blue thing. The start is the profile plane. That is the plane where we drew the sketch. We're going in one direction and the distance will be 100 according to our drawing. There we go. Now, we just looked at the S key in a sketch. Now, if we are in the feature mode, that is the 3D mode, and we press the S key, then you'll see that we get some design shortcuts which are three-dimensional tools. In a sketch, you get, let's go back there and edit that sketch and hit the S key. You see that we've got 2D sketching tools. Escape, finish the sketch. Now we're in the feature mode, hit the S key, and you see 3D design tools. OK, hit the escape key to get out of that. One thing it might be handy to have here on the design shortcuts is create sketch. There it is, create sketch. You've got the up arrow. Instead of going up here to create a sketch, I can hit the S key and choose it from the design shortcuts. And of course, we want our next sketch to be on the front face of this thing. So I'll click on the front face. It turns to faces. The grid's there, normal to the direction of view. So S. We've got uh, 2D sketching tools available in sketch shortcuts. There's the two-point rectangle. And if I mouse over the base of the part, you can see that the cursor will snap onto the baseline and the cursor changes to a little blue X. And so there's a two-point rectangle. D for dimension. And I'm going to go from one side of the rectangle to the middle of the part. Notice that I cannot pick up a snapping point on the plane, but I can get it on the origin. So I'm going to click on the origin to get a useful dimension down here and uh, that one needs to be changed to 50 according to our drawing. Then the same for the other side of the rectangle to the point of origin. Place it down here somewhere. That one needs to be 80. And then the height of this thing is 30. We've finished the sketch for that feature. Hit the E key for extrude. The profile needs to be this one that we've just drawn. We want the direction of the cut to go into the part rather than outwards. We're going to have a distance here, which will be not a particular distance, but to all. That is all of the way through. The operation is going to be cut rather than join or intersect. Click OK, and there's that feature. Notice that I only drew one of those. What I want to do is use the mirror command. In the 3D space, you'll find mirror on the create drop-down menu. Here's mirror and that opens up a dialog box. Notice that this one is actually the 3D mirror and not the sketch mirror. The type is for faces, bodies, or features. We're going to choose features. If we were in a, an assembly, we could choose components, but features is what we want in this particular case. The objects that we want to mirror across are in the timeline down here. It's the cut that we've just done, so I'll click on that, which selects it in the dialog box. The mirror plane, let's advance to the next item in the dialog box. I want that plane that is the green blue plane. It's a little bit tricky to select, but what I'll do is I'll put the mouse over it where I can see that the mouse is in front of it. And if I hold down the left mouse button, we get this list here. And there's one plane, that's a face. That's the other plane that we're interested in. And you can see the face at the back of the model. So this is a very handy way to select whatever's behind the cursor. There were four entities behind the cursor, two planes and two faces. So let's find that one again. It's the YZ plane. That's the blue-green plane. So I'll click while that's pre-highlighted and that's chosen the mirror plane as the correct one that I intended. And there's some options here which you can experiment with. Adjust is the one that works well here now. And so I'll click OK and that mirrored the feature across from one side of the part to the other. Next thing we'll do is create a sketch for the hole through the part. See for circle. I'm going to click on the point of origin of the... It doesn't matter exactly what size the circle is because I'm going to hit the D key for the dimension tool. 
If once on the circle, place the dimension outside. According to our drawing, the diameter of this hole through the middle is 80. Press enter, hit the E key to advance to the extrude dialog box. Profile is going to be what we've just drawn. I'm going to drag that inwards so that it's going in the correct direction. Make sure that it goes through all and just check to see that it's going to be a cut and OK that. Just check to see that it's going right through. We have one final feature to complete this part, and that is a fillet. So I click on the fillet tool. You can see by our drawing, radius of 10, and this says TYP, that's an abbreviation for typical. That means that there's more than one case where this is to be done. There's one here, one there, another two on the other side. So that's four in total. So it was economy of dimensions just to write it once and put the TYP abbreviation there. So now that our fillet dialog box is open and we've got the select field focused, we can just select the edges that we want to have involved in our fillet. I didn't have to turn the model around in order to select that one. These ones are also able to be selected. So four of them are now selected. The little focused field down here in the dialog is waiting for our input. And remember, it's a 10 radius for this fillet, and that's OK. And our part is now complete. You can turn off the point of origin if you like. Save your part one more time. So there you go. If you're getting good value out of this, then please have a look at my Buy Me A Coffee page or consider becoming a Patreon. The links are in the channel description down below. I'll see you in the next video where we'll do number six, where we're going to talk about the colors of the lines in the sketcher. You've probably noticed blue lines, black lines, and soon you'll come across purple ones. So let's sort that out and find out what it's all about. See you next time.